Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. Welcome back to PH3 Fixture Pharmacology of Anti-Effective Agents. So for this week and next week, we are going to cover this topic, antiviral agents. So here are the learning objectives for this topic. So at the end of this topic, you should be able to understand the pathophysiology of viral infections and their common disorders such as herpes virus that cause the chinkapox and the influenza, hepatitis B, hepatitis C as well as the HIV. And then you need to be able to discuss the pharmacological profile of drugs that can treat all these common disorders such as anti-herpes, anti-influenza, anti-hepatitis as well as antiretroviral agent. And then you should be able to discuss the mechanism of resistance as well as their treatment strategies to overcome the problems. And because of this, you should, I divided this topic into five videos. The first video we're gonna discuss on the herpes and anti-herpes drugs. The second video we're gonna discuss more on specific on the anti-influenza drugs. And then the third video we're gonna discuss on anti-hepatitis B. And then the fourth is the anti-hepatitis C. And the last video we're gonna discuss on the treatment for HIV. Viral diseases are infections caused by virus. So different type of virus can cause different type of infections. Common call is the most common one, which is caused by the viral infection in the respiratory tract. The other viral diseases include the chickenpox, herpes, hepatitis, whether hepatitis B or hepatitis C, influenza virus as well as the HIV and later on can, can cause AIDS. So these viruses are infectious unicellular microorganisms with their own genetic materials. So herpes virus such as HSV, herpes simplex virus, varicella zoster virus, and cytomegalovirus contain the linear double-stranded DNA that surround by a protein code. Uh, meanwhile, hepatitis B virus is one of the DNA virus is a circular double-stranded DNA. In contrast for hepatitis C virus is the linear positive single-stranded RNA. For influenza virus, they contain this linear negative single-stranded RNA. And for the human immunovirus, human immunodeficiency virus contain this linear positive single-stranded RNA that surround or coated by a capsid virus. So this viral uh, disease can cause when a pathogenic virus infects and proliferates inside a host organism and damage its immune system. So, different structures and genetic materials that are encoded in different viruses can lead to different mechanisms of pathways, as you can see in this diagram, and eventually it will lead to different treatment approach. As example, virus that contain DNA as genetic material, which are herpes virus and hepatitis V virus, require DNA to enter these nucleus whole cells. This is important for transcription and replication before forming new virus. Drugs such as guanosine analog and nucleoside nucleotide analog can be used to treat this disorder respectively. In contrast, virus that contain RNA as genetic material such as HCV and influenza normally process this replication and transcription for HCV can be done within this ribosome in the cytoplasm. There are few antiviral agents that can be used to block uncoating of viral capsids, which is the M2, block, M2 blocker that can be used to treat influenza virus. Aside from that, endonucleus inhibitors and direct acting antiviral agents or known as DNA can disturb the replication of viral RNA. Neuromidase inhibitor can be used to eradicate influenza viruses by preventing the release of new virus particles from these affected host cells. Meanwhile, for HIV patients, which is uh, the retrovirus, Numerous antiviral agents have been developed that targeted most of the stages of HIV replication such as entry inhibitors, 
translation inhibitors, reverse transcriptase inhibitors such as NRTI and NNRTI, as well as integrase inhibitors and protease inhibitors. Now, let's discuss the herpes virus and anti herpes virus agent. As mentioned before, herpes virus uh, is a DNA virus such as herpes simplex virus, varicella zoster virus, as well as cytomegalovirus, requires the virus to enter the, the uh, DNA to the nucleus host cells for transcription as well as replication before forming new virus to spread to the new host cells. So anti herpes virus agent will inhibit this replication process, thus prevent the formation of newly synthesized DNA. In order to understand the mechanism action of this agent, first, we need to briefly review the steps of DNA synthesis during replication of herpes virus. So during DNA replication, first nucleosides must be phosphorylated into their active triphosphate form. For example, thymidine is sequentially phosphorylated into monophosphate, diphosphate, and triphosphate, and only then, DNA polymerase can incorporate in, into with this growing change. Now, the herpes virus has a unique enzyme system to drive these reactions. Among them, a viral thymidine kinase, which in this example, phosphorylate thymidine to yield thymidine monophosphate. So, uh, in addition to that, this viral thymidine kinase also able to recognize anti-herpes such as acyclovir, gancyclovir, and pencyclovir that structurally resembles these guanosine nucleosides. So specifically, this viral thymidine kinase will add a phosphate group to these drug molecules, which then allows other cellular kinase to add two or more phosphate group thereby producing triphosphate substrate for the viral DNA polymerase enzyme. So this acyclovir triphosphate has a higher affinity for viral DNA polymerase than cellular DNA polymerase itself, which then this acyclovir triphosphate will competitively inhibit this viral DNA polymerase, then incorporate it into the terminate the growing viral DNA change and later on, will inactivate the viral DNA polymerase. So let me emphasize it again. Once the anti-herpes drugs such as acyclovir enter the infected host cells, the viral thymidine kinase happens to recognize acyclovir that structurally resembles the guanosine nucleosides, which later on will add a phosphate group to this drug molecule. Because of these mechanisms, allows other cellular kinase that present in host cells to add two or more phosphate groups, thereby producing triphosphate substrate for the viral DNA polymerase enzyme. As mentioned before, this acyclovir triphosphate has a higher affinity for viral DNA polymerase compared to cellular DNA polymerase itself. So, the nucleoside of the drugs will bind to template base and the phosphorylated forms will competitively inhibit the viral DNA polymerase that incorporates which will terminate this growing viral DNA chain and inactivate the viral DNA polymerase. Acyclovir is approximately has 10 times more potent against herpes simplex virus rather than against varicella zoster virus. This drug has weak activity against cytomegalovirus. Meanwhile, pencyclovir, another acyclic guanosine analog, has antiviral activity against HSV, VZV, as well as hepatitis B viral infections, which we'll discuss later in the anti hepatitis agents. So, Gensiclovir is the only one from this three guanosine analog SHB antiviral activity against cytomegalovirus as well as Epstein-Barr virus and human herpes virus type 6 and type 8. However, 
the bioavailability of oral acyclovir is quite low, which is about 15 to 20 percent. This drug is uh, available as tablet, gel, as well as intravenous preparations. So in the systemic use, this drug able to penetrate the cerebrospinal fluid that's about 20 to 50 percent of serum level and can be cleared by this renal clearance. Pensiclovir is only available as cream formulation to treat the herpes liabilities due to poor oral bioavailability. And Gansiclovir also has poor oral bioavailability, that's why Gansiclovir is administered by intravenously. So it can reach up to 50% of serum level in the cerebrospinal fluids. Due to this poor bioavailability, other anti herpes drugs have been invented, such as Valaciclovir, Fomciclovir, and Valgaciclovir, which are the poor drugs of these three preparations that are designed to improve the bioavailability. Uh, resistant to acyclovir can develop either alteration in the viral tamidin kinase or the DNA polymerase which can cross resistant to other acyclic guanosine analogs that require this enzyme to assert the antiviral activity. Thus, antiviral susceptibility testing is required to patients that suspected clinically resistant. Unlike guanosine analog, agents such as trifluoridine, citofovir, and foscarnet do not require activation by viral tamidine kinase. Thus, it can be used as preserve activity against the most prevalent acyclovir resistant virus strains. Cidofovir and trifluoridines use wholesale enzyme cellulokinase to be phosphorylated prior incorporate in the viral DNA polymerase. However, trifluoridine is not available for systemic use due to its incorporate into both viral as well as host DNA, which cause no selective toxicity present by this drug. Frosanet is an inorganic pyrophosphate analog that not only directly inhibit this herpes virus DNA polymerase, which also be able to directly inhibit the RNA polymerase and HIV reverse transcriptase without requiring any activation by phosphorylation. Foscanet block the pyrophosphate binding site of this enzyme and inhibit the cleavage of pyrophosphate from the OC nucleotide triphosphate. So, both for scanning and pseudophobia has poor oral bioavailability and GI intolerance. That is why they are only available as intravenous formulations only. Aside from antiviral activity against herpes virus, as mentioned before, first kind of also directly inhibit the RNA polymerase and HIV reverse transcriptase, which can viricidal HIV type 1 and type 2. First kind of can penetrate and reach several spinal fluid, about 43 to 67% of steady state serum concentration. In contrast, Cidofovir has poor CSF penetration. The mean plasma half-life of uh, first carnet is about 3 to 7 hours and up to 30% of this rock deposit in the bone and able to extend the half-life of several months which this drug being excreted by renal clearance. Both drug has potential to induce nephrotoxicity. That is why you need to advise to preloading or prehydration with normal saline. And at the same time, advise to stop any drug that has nephrotoxic potential such as aminoglycosides and amphotericin B.